Hello guys and gals, and welcome to another episode of Tutorials, yes, Tutorials. What are we tutorialing today? Well, today I thought we'd touch on a topic which is near and dear to my own heart. For those of you who are unaware, let me give you a little bit of a resume of my gaming career. I have played a massively large number of MMOs, like literally like Lord of the Rings Online, Final Fantasy XI, uh, freaking like, you know what, I could even pull up some screenshots. Let me pull up a screenshot real quick. So first off, we have uh, a picture of my warrior on uh, Final Fantasy XIV. I had a lot of fun on that game. I was a master fisherman, and uh, quite honestly, I had tons of fun. As you can see, I have like four different bars of skills here for this character. I couldn't even tell you what those abilities do anymore because it's been so long. But um, I was a pretty good tank. We killed lots of good bosses, and uh, quite honestly, it was just a lot of fun. Final Fantasy XIV was a pretty interesting game to tank on, and Warrior was a very interesting tank in general because it was more of a uh, off tank than a main tank, although you did main tank, which was very strange. So you were a main tank slash off tank, which was kind of strange. Another game that I played very heavily was Final Fantasy XI. I'm not sure if I have one of those screenshots, but let me let me dive. Well, after diving for what felt like an hour, I finally did manage to pull up one picture of my uh, character, my, my warrior slash paladin slash dragoon slash blue mage slash you know, from Final Fantasy XI online uh, named Wydock. This was me actually crafting a plus one Hades Asante, which was a very rare craft and uh, actually was worth quite a bit of money. Um, that was a pretty big payday, if I remember correctly. But I digress. Um, I think... Honestly, I just wanted to impress upon you that I've done a lot of tanking in a lot of games. Not just regular, like, MMOs, but I've also built tons of tanky characters on Diablo 2. And I have a very firm understanding of what makes a character tanky and why you want to make a character tanky. Um, and uh, Diablo 4 is no exception to this. There's definitely issues with tankiness and trying to survive specific encounters. Well, the question is is how do you make your Diablo 4 character tanky? Well, instead of just, like, telling you what it is that you're going to be doing, I'm going to actually go over a lot of the different mechanics, and we're going to talk about the mechanics, how they work, and why each in particular mechanic has less or more of an impact on how your character tanks, and also why certain mechanics are best avoided, um, as well as why certain mechanics are going to get you killed. So first off, let's start with um, one of the easiest ones, which I feel like a lot of people misunderstand completely, in my opinion, um, which is maximum health. So maximum health is something that you can get on equipment. Um, you can find pieces of equipment that have large amounts of maximum health on it. Um, you can obviously have ways to increase your health and other things like rubies and all sorts of other pieces of equipment. But what does maximum health actually do from your character and um, how effective is it at actually making you tanky? Well, it's complicated. So maximum health has a couple different variables that need to be talked about before we get into the nitty gritty of that maximum health is really not as impactful as it may seem. Um, so let me pull up a notepad here and we're going to write some things down. So first off, what you need to know about maximum health, and this is the most important thing, is that maximum health um, is only required to prevent a one-shot. The general gist of what maximum health is for is so that when a boss or a monster or anything within the game goes to hit you, that you do not die. And that might seem self-explanatory, but for a lot of people that are setting up tanky characters, even in MMOs, they don't quite understand that you need to have a bare minimum health to prevent a one-shot. So what this means is, is that let's just pretend in a hypothetical scenario you are a god to your tank. You know, you have the you are the maid of adamantium itself. You know, like Wolverine would be jealous of you, and you have eighty five percent damage reduction versus all monsters. Okay, all monsters, not just not just bosses or not just regular monsters or not just trash mobs, but any monster that touches you is going to have their damage reduced by 85%, which is massive. You're just the tankiest beast that ever in the whole tanky land. Right? So you go up against this boss, and the boss hits you for 
100,000 damage. <laughs> All right, why 100,000 damage? Well, you're, you're going to see in a minute. So let's subtract 85% from that uh, just as a flat value. Now, things get more complicated than this, and obviously um, there are formulas behind formulas, and by the time you're done, you don't exactly know what's going on, right? But you just take 100,000, and you subtract 85%, and now you have a 15,000 damage hit, right? So we have 15,000 damage that is left from this boss hit. Now, this 100,000 damage represents and and this is important because if you don't if you don't think about it this way you're not going to understand the 100,000 damage represents the biggest hit the boss is capable of all right so as a tank in this scenario if you're fighting a boss that has a 100,000 donkification okay even if you are the tankiest beast that ever existed in all tanky land and you can reduce all damage incoming by 85%, you are still going to take a 15,000 damage donk to the head, which means that you need to have greater than... Why does my greater than symbol not work? That was really weird. That is totally not the correct buttons for my greater than symbol. Where's my greater than symbol at? Well, guys, I've lost my greater than symbol. Can I use this one? <laughs> can I can I use nope, can't use that one either, huh? Well, that's sad. Alright, so greater than <laughs> um fifteen thousand. So you need you need at the bare minimum fifteen thousand and one. Right? So you need at least fifteen thousand and one HP to survive this attack. No matter what you do, no matter how much tankiness you add to your character, there's always a limit to how tanky that you can be. Now, having 15,001 isn't going to be very good. Obviously, in this scenario, you are going to have a difficult time maintaining maximum HP. This is very important. So, maintaining max HP is crucial to absorbing a one-shot. There are some things in the game that are designed to do a very specific amount of damage that is designed literally to kill you. There is no other purpose for that ability other than to kill you, and if you do not have your defensive mechanic up at that particular time to absorb this damage, then you are probably going to die, right? So maintaining maximum HP is crucible to absorbing in the one-shot, right? This means that HP is not great. <laughs> HP tends to be lackluster unless you can maintain it so even if i have 16,000 hp just in a hypothetical scenario um and the boss can hit me for a maximum of 15,000 hp then i have to maintain greater than 15,000 hp at all times because i don't know when this 15,000 damage hit is going to come in and donk me on the head right so HP or maximum HP is only really important when it comes to preventing a one shot. That is the main purpose of HP in video games is to prevent you from being killed in one attack. Now HP alone does not do this because as you can clearly see, the boss does 100,000 damage, okay? So if you do not have 85% damage reduction, if instead you have 70% damage reduction, then guess what? Now you have to have a much larger amount of HP to absorb that same attack. Because now instead of it being 15,000, we're looking at 100,000. Boom, boom, boom. Minus 70%, which means now we have to have 30,000 HP to absorb that one shot. HP is usually what I like to call the tank's... <laughs> uh, how do I put this? Um, the false man's tanking equation. So people like to focus on HP more than anything else when it comes to tanking. And it's my personal opinion that that's a, a bad sign 
because it usually means the tank doesn't really know what they're doing because they're focusing on a stat which is less important than the other stats. In this particular situation, you can see that a mere 15% increase in damage reduction means that I need 15,000 less hit points to absorb that ability, which means that if I could get my HP up to 30,000 with 85% damage reduction, I could potentially take two of his one donks before dying. Um, and this is where things really get spicy, because in MMOs, and we're not in an MMO, but in, in an MMO, healing comes into play as well, so this is very important. So you need a buffer space for the heals to come in, right? So you can't just have 15,001 HP, because that would give you no buffer space for the healer to work. The healer would have to nuke heal you to bring you back up to an acceptable level so that you don't die from like a regular attack a afterwards. So having 16,000 really isn't even enough. So in this situation, once you figure out what the maximum damage is that a monster can dish out to you, then you have to figure out, well, what's my safe HP level? Once you figure out your HP that is required, and then you figure out a nice little buffer space, you really do not need any more HP past that. And this is, this is something that a lot of people fail on, is they stack HP in lieu of other buffs. So once you have enough HP to avoid a one-shot with healing buffer space, that's it. Like, that is, that is literally it. That is all you need at this point. Now, in Diablo 4 specifically, we don't know how much damage a monster can potentially hit us for. And this is a big issue. We also have a lot of other things going on. So there are problems with our buffs are not constant. So in MMOs, you may be um, familiar with the term defensive cooldown, which is the same in Diablo 4. A defensive cooldown is something that could potentially save your life versus an attack that would otherwise kill you. So you know for a fact that, de that the attack will kill you. In MMOs like Final Fantasy XIV, Final Fantasy XI, Lord of the Rings Online, when a boss uses a really big kadonka donk on you, sometimes the tank has no other alternative other than to burn a defensive cooldown. So burning a defensive cooldown for those times is important because it saves your life. Right, But the problem with this is, is you are not always this tanky. Conditional problems come into play that will create issues with having the correct amount of HP and also your healing buffer space. Because if you're only able to take the hit while you have your defensive cooldown up, then that means that you're not able to take the hit when your defensive cooldown is down. Now that's fine for a boss who's using a very big wind-up attack on you that is really obvious and you can see it coming like 10 miles away, right? But the problem with that is that in Diablo 4, the regular monsters can one-shot you. So HP, which is one of probably the most loved stats, I think, in tanking, despite the fact that I think it's probably one of the worst, um, does have its usefulness. Its usefulness is that once you have enough HP to avoid a one-shot, with healing buffer space, that's really all you need. You need enough HP so that you are comfortable, that you are not going to be demolished by any monster that comes along. And HP itself is not going to do this for you, unfortunately. So, so you have to take HP as one component of a larger puzzle, a giant puzzle which has many, 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 many facets. And speaking of those many, 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 many facets, let's talk about the next facet on the list, which is...